Hi friends, I'm delighted to be part of the Distance Festival and I'm really excited to have the chance to meet virtually over the summer. And I really hope someday we have a chance on my travels to cross paths in the real world. Um, it's rare I have the opportunity to attempt a virtual interview. I'll do my best and thanks very much for bearing with me. Uh, who are you and where are you from? Uh, my name is Tim Feeney. I'm an American musician and sound and installation artist and filmmaker. I grew up way to the north of New York City, and I currently live in the desert to the north outside Los Angeles. Tell us a bit about your practice. What do you do? Well, my work with sound involves projects where a listener pays close attention to something seemingly simple that changes really slowly over time. And by paying close attention to this environment, they might find something there alive and vibrant and wonderful that they might not have noticed um, given the attention to which they normally pay to these circumstances in their everyday life. Um, I'm not really interested in narrative, much less so than the chance to give an observer the opportunity to see and hear and feel directly. How do you do it? Well, actually, in, in several threads, uh, I began doing this as an improvising musician. Um, and when I travel, I carry a little duffel bag of small percussion instruments um, and natural materials and objects I've picked up in my travels. Um, for example, I have a set of river stones that I picked up in rural Vermont in 2000 that I've been carrying for 20 years. And when I play music in public, I have the opportunity to pick these stones up and drag them across one another. And I get this tactile engagement with this physical object. I get um, almost a haptic experience off of the sound from that object as I scrape it and it rings from my ears. And the combination of the tactile and haptic has this um, reverberant ripple into my memory as I reflect on the other times I've played these materials in public, the circumstances under which I found them, how heavy they were to crate up and move um, as I've been about my travels and over my life. And hopefully I, I in, have the chance to invite listeners into a similar experience. Um, in my installation and video work, I no longer have to be physically present and in motion in order to um, set this experience in motion, but they work analogously. When did you start? Uh, as we all are, I was lucky to fall into just the right community at just the right time. Um, I was living in Boston 20 years ago, and by chance I happened to meet a community of artists. Um, you know, the, the types of people as musicians, for example, who are interested in, you know, taking the backs off of clock radios and wiring them together to find new ways to build instruments that sounded like nothing else they could find in the world. Um, and these musicians had a strong crossover with visual artists and other performers, and it was incredibly striking and powerful for me to meet them and get this full sense of, of artistic community, you know, as we all do these folks were responsible for making a flower bloom in a place where that would not have been possible without their direct effort. Um, and as in many other places I've been to in the world, like this is art that thrives in warehouses and basements and bookstores and garages as much as it does more traditional gallery spaces and the makers and the curators and the grant writers and the people living um, in the second story loft space all tend to be the same people. And the, the communal and DIY spirit about that was astonishingly important and I've been following it for the following 20 years. Who or what inspires your practice? As we all are, I'm, I'm lucky and rich beyond imagination to get to know and work with um, the people I've been close to over my time and travels and bouncing off of those with whom I have collaborative relationships has been the most extraordinarily important thing I can do. Um, I brought up attention and slow moving soundscape previously. I think it's important to address this not in a meditative 
or sound bath or wooish sort of sense if I want to be less than charitable to like some aspects of being in the world. Like there is something incredibly important about paying direct attention um, in a way that I don't normally have an experience in my regular life. And the awareness that comes from that, I think, has inspired everything I do. What are you exhibiting at Distance 2021? Uh, I'm showing a 20-minute film called Caroline. Um, for the last 10 years, I've been collecting a recording archive of sounds and locations and places that have been interesting as I've traveled. Um, and I got a really special one in the spring of 2011. I was living in a really cold and icy place. Um, and I remember one extraordinary night, I think I was working on something in my basement, and I noticed out my window that the spring peeper frogs had hatched. And just this extraordinary sound in this place was sort of the marker of new life coming back. Um, you know, it was cold and dark and snowing in this place about six months a year. And when I heard this sound each springtime, I knew that the leaves on the trees would start to be blooming soon. Um, sunlight would reemerge. I'd be able to go outside without six layers of wool coat um, and just light and vibrancy would be coming back as it did cyclically every year. Um, this has been likewise a really powerful uh, touchstone in my memory for the last decade um, and over this quarantine circumstance I've been really reflecting on that that I think one of my responses to this moment has been to sort of burrow into my own nostalgia given that it's been dangerous to leave home and I can't practice music and art and I can't meet my loved ones and collaborators the same way. One reaction I had was to hide into um, the better feeling times in my past somehow. I think that feeling is really dangerous. Um, and I had a consumer grade camcorder sitting on a shelf and there, one night I was just feeling aggravated and I thought I would just take a walk and clear my head and I brought the thing out. Um, and over time, fooling with these images, like I, I saw a way to reflect on this past experience in a way that could talk about the present. Um, so the film you'll be seeing is a recontextualizing of this sound recording uh, via image that's generated from a moonrise over my current home in California, uh, taken by this low rent consumer camcorder that's pushed to the limits of its resolution in terms of uh, light sensitivity and zoom quality. So the image breaks and pixelates and blurs uh, in a way that seemed remarkably tactile and that fit the context of the sound of this audio recording in a way that they could talk to each other at remove over a decade of experience. Um, and I felt really fortunate to find and stumble across it and I'm happy to be able to show it to you. How does it link to the theme of distance? It, this um, connection and gap in memory and timing seems incredibly important and actually it was really exciting to see the call come out in a way that I might be able to speak with you about it in a way that is resonant um, to our separation and geography right now too because of this online environment we have an opportunity to be together though we are halfway around the world experiencing an image environment from a year ago recontextualized via a sonic environment from a decade ago. And as we're all doing right now, I feel like I'm reaching out from my office uh, towards my friends and neighbors and loved ones at these expanses and gaps. And it was just so elegantly reflected that I'm really excited to participate. Where can people find out more? Uh, you can find me via the web at timfeeney.com over my social medias. Uh, my Instagram is the other Tim Feeney, and you can find me on Facebook as well. Um, I'm really excited again to get to join this community for a month this summer, and I look forward to being in touch. Thank you very much.